Hey, Pete. Hey, man. Where do you place the notes? Yeah. Hmm. I'm Adam Annis. And I'm Peter Martin. You're listening to the You'll Hear Podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. Coming at you today, sponsored by SoundSlice. SoundSlice is a beautiful transcribing tool. It's an amazing community where you can check out other people's transcriptions. Go to soundslice.com slash transcribe to kick the tires on the transcribing tool. Absolutely free. We use it every day for our transcriptions here on our courses at Open Studio uh, and have for years. It's really uh, one of the foundational tools of our business, and our users love it. So check it out for yourself. Absolutely. Soundslice.com. Uh, get to know it, love it like we do, and you'll be in good shape. Absolutely. So, where do you place the notes? This is a question from it is. Alex. We did uh, not answer it. <laughs> about, I mean, we're going to do our best here. I'm a little confused. But I'm going to let's do it again. Let's hear it out. Hey, Peter. Hey, Adam. Hopefully, I don't sound like I'm in space anymore. It's uh, Alex, by the way. Um, space your pal, place. supposedly from Colorado, right? <laughs> anyway, I had a question about modal playing. Um, there's a ton of stuff on what scales to use, whether it's pentatonics or symmetrical scales or Dorian. All of that's great. But what I want to know is where do you place those notes that you have in that melodic library, right? Where do you place those notes within the measure? Um, gross simplification, comparing it to bebop, but in bebop you're told or taught to place your chord tones on strong beats or the quarter note super gross simplification ew it's so gross um because it's you know so so you know distilling this complex language into something distilling offensively simple and it's not entirely true but there's a relationship between the note and where you place it in the bar so how do you do that in a modal sense? Where do you place the notes in relation to the measure or in relation to the two bar, four bar, four bar or eight bar phrase in a modal context? Please, please, please give me some. Cl- I want to get cut off, Alex. Oh, did he talk too long? I think it might have. Yeah. It's, it's right in the minute 30. I think you only get 90 seconds, but I think we have the gist. Uh, yeah. Speaking of distilling. Well, I think we're on that free sound uh Sound speak not, pipe speak pipe plan still. That's why I cut off. Sorry about <laughs> One that. One glass of bourbon and Peter's out. Yeah, we're <laughs> Big still shout out to Old Forester. We're, we're, we're the late, late, late edition of the. It's like uh, you'll hear it late night. <laughs> That's right. Bone trick, bone bone. Okay, well, calm down there. Buddy. Uh, no, so Alex, this is a. It's an interesting question. I yeah. haven't really thought about this, but I, as you were talking, I was thinking about some some of my note choices where I put them on modal tunes. Yeah. The first thing that comes to mind on modal tunes yes. is that it's a really a good time to get the pretty notes out of the chord. Mm. You know what I mean? So something that you might, it's not even about placing them, but I think it's more about what notes are you leaning into on mm. the mode? If we're starting with Miles Davis's classic modal tune, so what? Yeah. Right. Classic. Uh, you know, you can use, you can lean in on the root and the fifth if you want. But to me, that's not the most interesting sound when I'm doing a, this D minor 7, you know, yeah. minor 13. I want to hear the, some of the pretty notes, some of the ninths. That note sounds pretty. And the 13s, and especially the 11th on this. Yeah. So, you know, and then I'll use the root maybe to ground it, but that's not really, it's, it's almost like, first of all, when considering any of this on a modal tune, the melody is very important for this. So yeah. learn your melodies of where you are uh, in the tune so that you can play around with that with what the listener's hearing and you can reference that. But for me, it's almost not... I mean, there's not a similar thing to bebop where it's like you want to... Where everything, you know, can line up on the beat with like the third or the... You know what I mean? Strong tones. Yeah. Because there's really... That's the point of the modal thing is there's not like... It's more ambiguous, right? Yeah. It's a more airy sound. So to me, I think of like, it, it doesn't really matter, but I, I kind of am hearing something that I want to surround, that I want to lean into a sound, if, whether that's the 13th. You know, that's what I'll, that's what I'll do. Well, it's interesting that you, you, took, um, you took the question to really think about what scale tones 
what intervals or, or yeah, really the scale tones of a certain mode that one might start with. And I, I took it more as in terms of on, on the beat, on the upbeat, what part, but both are so important, right? Well, but I don't, I guess I don't, on modal tunes especially, I don't think about, I would never, yeah. I would never run a scale literally like that. Right, right, right. You but know? that doesn't mean, but, but remember he was saying like in bebop, and, and I would never learned that where you're supposed to, emph- he was saying, he was taught to emphasize. Yeah, this is a the, thing people do. The right? on the beat. Yeah, but if you play that same thing, start that same phrase up, but start on the upbeat instead of on the beat. Like one, two. Ah, I can't even do it. Mm-hmm. I'm so trained. To me, that's kind of more interesting. Or can be like that juxtaposition of it. I yeah. don't know that it's always on. And 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 for modal playing too, I don't think that there's any like type of of beat that one would start on as opposed to not i agree you know what i mean i agree and so i think the, the these things in terms of you know pretty notes or like finding the places within the scale not playing the scale yeah you know you'll play fragments of it sometimes but like w- where i like i like that you use lean into because that's almost like a phrase i don't have to start there yep. it might be kind of where you pause in the middle of a phrase or, or where your target note is or however you want to think about it but the place where it's, it gives you a little bit of a little sparkly sound yeah. of that modal, that, that modal type of playing modality, whatever it is. Um, but I like that a lot better too, as opposed to like, because think about it, you could play a phrase, uh, either bebop or modal or whatever. And look, the reality is like we're mixing these things up. It's I, I think it's dangerous to say I'm going to play modal now. I'm going to play modern. I'm going to play, you know. Um, um, Netherlands style. I don't know, you know, <laughs> but I mean, we, we're trying to get these different sounds and then put together, put them together in an interesting way. Yeah. But in terms of modal playing, you could start on any, like if you're in four, four, it could be on one and of one, two, yeah. triplet and of three. I mean, there's oh, no, oh, right I get it. Or no, but he's saying that. So sometimes people teach bebop that you can still start on the end of one, right. but that the on beat is right. always one of these right. chord tones. But so, that's I don't I don't I don't believe in that either. That's yeah. why I was saying when you shift everything a half beat, it can still be like if the melodic construct of that line exactly right. becomes its own shape. And in fact, when it overlaps like that, that's when the interesting stuff happens. And to Alex's credit, he did say like this is a gross, gross simplification because yeah. it is. That's just the the way of lining up those strong tones on the beat and a bebop thing. I think it's just a way of teaching people how to line up things if you want to. You know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I always think about. Uh, uh, you know the, the the classic example to me is the melody to Donna Lee, mm-hmm. in which it's offset from almost the very first phrase. So when you're a bit up, you're already on the F seven, but it's still on an A flat major. Right, right. You know what I mean? See, it stays on the yeah, but it lands there on the third it on has. the beat. So. Yeah. It, so I do think like there there is that a little bit. There's some of this, but it's never a hard and fast rule. And right. bebop players certainly didn't play like that all the no, time. No, no, no. And yeah. I think modal players don't. Um, you know, one thing to think about too is like I'm just trying to remember, like you know, Cannonball Adderley. So because you mentioned so what, and we're talking about Miles Davis before, like so what, Cannonball Adderley, John Coltrane. People think about them as very different players uh, in terms of Cannonball being more blues. And maybe bebop based, Coltrane being more modal. But if you look at the way they play over so called modal changes, I think that you'll find some things very much alike in terms of like the rhythmic concept, yeah. the blues concept too. Like you look at John Coltrane, that, that can become a real part of your modal phrasing. It's like how do you put blues in and, and, and how do you interpret that into your into your phrasing? The way both those players, you know, integrated the blues into that modal style was yeah. so incredible. Yep. Different with you know from each other, but very yeah. very special. And I almost I think the way you were playing at first that reminds me of like the classic sort of Miles way of playing, like where he's really hitting those pretty notes at the right time. Well, I read that Miles thought about that. Like right. He thought like I I don't want to start on the root. I want to start on the nine. Yeah. And Coltrane even like with the so called sheets of sound, he was still like hitting you know, up to those notes. Yeah. It was just a lot of other stuff. You yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think about for me modal when I'm playing a modal tune like if we're playing like you know um, I, to me that's freedom that I yeah. don't have to put line up notes on the beat or whatever that I can do these phrases really musical phrases and the the floating mo- floating musical yeah. phrases and the mo- the modality makes 
allows me the freedom to take that to other places. Mm -hmm. Even when if it's maybe not in the chord. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so strong the melody in modal modal situations that I it it I can lean on these things that are not even necessarily in the scale, you know. And like that whole section there too really becomes. Is this look at look at that amazing turnstile? Beautiful, beautiful. Watch my bourbon. <laughs> but that, you know, leads like the way you're playing. Like basically, you're playing then in a modal style over a bunch of very standardy kind of two five ones. And then you, when you get to the more open sections, you can, you know, where you've got longer time over those sus chords. Yeah, yeah. You, it can become very melodically driven, but it can still extend into when you're playing over changes. So even if you're playing over a tune, like a typical standard tune that's not a modal tune, if you apply those same kind of techniques over mm -hmm. those kind of standard changes, oh, it yeah. can be very interesting. No, you can do this on Have You Met Miss Jones, right? Oh, you can do that. Like yeah. Yep. You know, all that kind of stuff, man, works yep. great. No, and that's and it's just a great thing to, to to remember that playing modal. I mean, although look, until we started talking about this, we never actually said, "Hey, man, you want to play modal?" But it is a thing, <laughs> and it's a fun thing to talk about. It's mostly a fun thing to play, or whatever. But it should never felt like you're restricted to certain tunes. We're just using those as an examples. But the fun is when you apply it in an interesting and innovative way to any tune. You That's know, right. Or maybe something that you wrote. I mean, it just becomes part of your musical identity at, at cer a certain point. Right, right, so, right. Uh, you got you to gotta get that in. You got to shed it, though, Alex. You got to practice it. Just as much as you're trying to line up the bebop scale on the downbeat or whatever. <laughs> right. You know, practice getting, leaning into these different chord tones, uh, having the freedom to allow the melody to dictate where you want to go with this. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And remember, space is the place. Space is the place. Take the cue from Miles. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, and and you're, that's right. This is Alex, the space is the place yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Colorado. 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 I don't think he's really from Colorado. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, CBD. <laughs> thanks, Alex, for the question. Yeah. Uh, if you have a question, hey, Pete, let's say, for example, you had a question that yeah. you wanted to send in to yeah. the You'll Hear It podcast. Like, hey, when are we done with these things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, where would you leave that uh, that voice question? I would send it to outer space. Oh, okay. That was not going to get answered. <laughs> well, via the internet. Um, and the portal to get there would be <laughs> you'll hear it dot com. Actually, uh, that's right. You can go to you'll hear it dot com. You can leave us a speak pipe. You can check out our blog. We have lots of cool musical uh, uh, blog posts up there. We've got some videos. You can uh, two minute jazz. We, we are ladled with two minute jazz from all of our artists. Two minute jazz free. is it's the OG. It's the OG of our free content. That's right. Uh, yeah. Two minutes to uh, jazz mastery. No. Well, you're on your way, though. We uh, we also want to thank our sponsor, SoundSlice. Go to SoundSlice.com slash transcribe. Check out the world's best transcription tool. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, go check it out. Also, we still have our offer for, you'll hear it, listeners, for Open Studio. A special offer for just this week. BOGO. Just a couple more days. What do you know about BOGO? BOGO. I like to get on my BOGO stick and <laughs> jump around town. Wait, weren't oh, BOGOs pogo. when I was a kid? It was uh, two balls and they had like a cylinder and you would remember that? You yeah. You put one, the top ball between your feet. What was no, it? No, that was a BOSU. That's a BOSU. BOSU? Oh, no, that's for exercise. The half uh, sphere. No, no, no it's kind of like that. But okay. you used to jump. Jump. Pogo, pogo stick. Pogo jump. Pogo. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up. Are and you talking gonna, about a pogo stick? No, it wasn't a okay. stick. It was, okay. it was like a, two balls, two balls that were connected um, vertically, and then there was a sphere that went in the middle of it, and that's where your feet would go. So you were bouncing on one ball, and your feet were holding. I'll, I'm going to send a link up, and you'll okay. see. Okay. Yeah. Well, does that have anything to do with our offer? No, but our offer is amazing. It is amazing. Tell yeah. them about it. So $129, you get the jazz piano uh, for beginner's course and the elements of jazz piano lifetime access $129 it's over a $320 value uh check that out and uh yeah it's our beginner course our intermediate course they go hand in hand and uh if you're a beginning pianist very useful if you're a bass player or a guitar player or a drummer yeah. and you want to get better at jazz piano 
perfect time to get this. We've heard from a lot of um, you know our members that are saxophonists, singers, whatever. This is this jazz piano for beginners. They say really kind of unlocks some doors to them. They'd been wanting to you know just didn't have access to a teacher or a time or whatever. Wanted to go through and sort of get some voicings and really learn their way around the instrument. Comp for yourself, read chord yeah. charts. This will help with that. Yeah, it's very uh, it, it's it's beginner, but it's very much based upon being able to hear, listen, and imitate. I do a lot of that kind of stuff. Jump right in. It's not heavy on the theory. It's got that, but it's mostly about just listening, imitating groove, blues. Uh, the PM Blues is kind of a PM classic. Blues, yeah. We're not going deep into the modal no. one finger snap. We're, no. we're keeping it simple with the blues. That's right. Yeah. yeah Good so old check fashion. that out. Use the uh, Put them both in your card, I guess, is what happens. Jazz Piano for Beginners and Egypt, Elements, Elements of Jazz. jazz piano. Yeah, yeah. And then there'll be a place for like an offer code or something at the top of the yep. checkout page. And mm-hmm. you put BOGO, B-O-G-O. B-O-G-O, BOGO. All caps. Yep. Or all oh lower. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. It's not case one. sensitive. That's not, no. not case sensitive. Just in case you were wondering, hey now. Yeah. All so right. uh, go check out that offer and uh, yeah, till tomorrow. You'll hear it.